welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this one today because this is a heat exchanger and this is a dual boiler. Two espresso machines that can brew coffee and steam milk at the exact same time, but two ways that are very different in the way that they achieve that. And I wanna talk about which one might be better for you. Why are dual boilers so popular? And these two machines particularly are very similar in price. Why would you choose one over the other? I've done a lot of comparison videos lately, and if I'm honest, they're not my favorite to film. There's a lot of work and prep that goes into these, but I do film them because I know you guys enjoy them, and I get them requested a lot. I do wanna do more videos outside of comparisons, but if you do appreciate coffee comparisons and if they help you in your aid purchasing equipment, let me know by hitting that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't yet for more videos like this one here. Okay, so this is the Elite Mara X, and this is the Elite Elizabeth. And like I've already said, this is a heat exchanger and a dual boiler at $1,000. $550 and $1,700 US, why would you not just opt for the more expensive one? Now, if you're on a tight budget, that's a pretty easy answer. Like, why would you want a dual boiler over a heat exchanger? Well, if you don't know what a heat exchanger is, I do cover that in my Mara X review. So if you haven't watched that, I'll leave that in the description below. Go watch that and then come back to this video. But a dual boiler, why are they so praised? Why are they so popular? And what is the deal with them? They have two boilers. One works for the coffee water and one works for the steam. And this is really important to understand because not only does it allow you to steam and brew coffee at the same time, most dual boilers, in fact, any dual boiler that I've worked with has PID systems. In other words, it has the ability to adjust temperature for at least the coffee water often nowadays the steam temperature too. And this really allows you to adjust your coffee in precision levels. And that's what a lot of coffee enthusiasts and espresso enthusiasts love about dual boilers. Back to the Mara X and heat exchangers, this really wasn't possible until just a few years ago. Before that, you'd have to flush the water to be able to get to the temperature you want. And dual boilers were incredibly popular for that reason. But in today's age, machines like the Mara X and other heat exchangers exist where PIDs exist in these machines and the temperature is more controllable for your coffee water and your steam pressure. So let's dive into this. So really important to understand the Elite Elizabeth is a cheaper dual boiler, cheaper than most dual boilers on the market. Uh, this would kind of go up against other machines like the Ranchilio Silvia Pro. Uh, this would go up against machines like the Breville dual boiler and the entry level into the dual boiler world. What you often get in that is smaller boilers. This isn't gonna have the same size boilers as something like a Linea Mini or the Bianca or your Profitech Pro 700. Something like this is so great if you just wanna have a few people over and you're making coffee for maybe you and a loved one. If you're pulling back to back shots for five, 10, 15 people, a machine like the Elizabeth starts to become limited. But what's really interesting is a machine like the Mar X has a bigger capacity. Let me explain. The dual boilers on here actually equate to 0.9 of a liter. The Elizabeth has a 300 millimeter brew boiler and a 600 milliliter steam boiler. And the Mar X has a 1.8 liter boiler. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to steam more milk without losing pressure. With heat exchangers, you're kind of heating that water on demand and the heat exchanger system just won't heat water as precise as a dual boiler will. A dual boiler has precision PIDs for both the brew boiler and steam boiler in this case, and I can choose how much steam pressure I want, but also I can choose what temperature I want to the exact degree. And that's what really makes these machines so different because a dual boiler like this is so great for some people who want the absolute best precision for their coffee, but some people want power. But I do want to talk about their brew groups because they're very different designs. I mean, they look completely different. The E61 on the Mara X is very popular. You know, it's on my Bianca, it's on many espresso machines that you find in that prosumer range. It's tried and true. This thing has been around for decades and honestly, they're pretty much bulletproof. There's so many accessories available for the E61 and while it's not the newest technology or the most advanced technology, it is nice to know that this is something that is widely available and if any parts do go wrong, it's easy to fix. More than that, they're a little bit more adjustable and moddable. With this machine in particular, you can add flow profiling and flow control. You can actually take the device right from the Bianca and add it on this. But the Elizabeth uses something called a saturated brew group. You find this on La Marzocco machines like the Linea Mini. You also find it on machines like the Breville Dual Boiler. And there are pros and cons to a machine like this. One huge pro for me is this warm up time. This can take about 10 to 15 minutes to warm up and you're ready to brew coffee. Where this guy right here, you're talking about 25 to 30 minutes. 
And so you're probably watching this and you're ready to write in the comments, well Kyle, use a smart switch, have this turn on every morning, and that's totally legit, but it is nice sometimes to be able just to flick this machine on and it's ready to go. A lot of the accessories from the E61s, like port filters, actually do work on the Elizabeth, which I do appreciate, that's really smart. You can see it has the one cup and two cup buttons. Those aren't one cup and two cup. In fact, they're just the first program button and the second program button, which in this screen right here, you can adjust how much time you want each shot to be. For example, I can push button number one and program it to pull for 30 seconds every time. A machine like this, you can't do that. You're manually pulling the lever and pushing it back down, which again, for some people love that tactile feel. This machine has mechanical pre-infusion. Well, the Elizabeth thought about this too, and they have an electronic pre-infusion system. Now, this isn't quite as great as something like the mechanical pre-infusion on the Mar X, but it's actually not bad. What you can do is adjust how much time you want to pre-infuse your water. It'll shut off the pump after it adds that water for that many seconds, and then it'll go back to pumping your coffee. For example, if I turn it to three seconds of pre-infusion, it'll pump water for three seconds, turn off for a bit, and then go back to full pressure. That just allows that coffee bit to be soaked with some low pressure water before slamming it with nine bars of pressure. Now, super important for you to know, the saturated brew group is not exclusive to dual boilers. There are single boilers, there are heat exchangers with the saturated brew group, but this machine has it. There are also dual boilers that have E61s. This is just the example of these two machines I'm giving you today. This has two boilers and it has one dedicated just to steam. But understand that 600 milliliters of steam, it's not quite a lot. So for a dual boiler, this is a very small steam boiler and that's where they kind of cut those costs for those small boilers. This is plenty of steam for two back-to-back -back drinks without having to wait for it to warm up. But don't use this in a small cafe setting. Don't use this in a small restaurant. This isn't the machine for that. You're gonna want something a little little bit more capable for pulling those back-to-back -back shots. The brew boiler, on the other hand, is pretty small at 300 milliliters, and that has its pros and cons. The pro is that it does heat up very quickly, but the downside to that, again, is back-to-back -back shots. Now, let's talk about the boilers for just one second. There's definitely a trend within stainless steel boilers and prosumer coffee machines. And sometimes people in reviews often miss the materials that boilers are made of. And this is actually a big selling point for many machines. Lalit has been doing a great job of keeping most of their brew boilers stainless steel. And stainless steel has proven to be pretty desirable in this market because it's proven to be less corrosive with scale. And there's been a conversation that stainless steel lasts a little bit longer, but I really don't think it's that big of a deal. I think people put too much emphasis on the material of the boilers and a brass boiler is going to be wonderful. The bottom line, if you take care of your espresso machine, you're descaling them when they tell you to, you're using good quality water, they're gonna last you a very long time. Don't worry about the building materials of the boiler so much, copper, brass, stainless steel. While it is nice to know what's inside your machine, and it's nice to know that they've used stainless steel, if a machine like the Elizabeth has a brass boiler, I would not buy it for that reason. I would understand though, that's why machines are less money. Now you might be wondering which one brews better coffee out of these two, and I'd say they're very similar, very similar but the Elizabeth does have the fact that it can adjust temperature right down to the exact degree, where the Mara X can only be adjusted by a three-way switch for its temperature. It's very good, and it will pull fantastic shots. I wouldn't say this makes better coffee, but if that does matter to you, that is something to be noted on this guy. Now, the size of these is gonna be very different. The Mara X is a longer but narrower design, and the Elizabeth is a wider but shorter design. Back to the steam pressure, it's on-demand steam, and there's plenty of it but the Mar X, especially if you turn into its steam priority modes, will have a lot more steam for a longer period of time. Both great, very different. One has a longer steam arm, one has a shorter ball bearing, so this will go wherever you need it to. The one thing people talk about on the Elizabeth, it's his plastic steam knob. And I do have to address this because I do think it's a little dinky. Do I think it's a reason not to buy this machine? <laughs> Absolutely not. I do think this is fine. To not buy a machine over a steam knob, definitely avoidable. But again, it's not bad. It'll do the job. It isn't up to par with everything else in this machine. If this comparison was helpful or interesting, be sure to hit that like button, but we're not done just yet. Now, before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to the company who made this whole video possible. Although our Patreon community is growing, it's not quite there for this level of machine. So Etika reached out and said, Kyle, we'd love to lend you a couple of espresso machines and you can honestly review them. You tell everybody what you think and in exchange, give us a quick shout out. They're not paying me, they're not paying me for this video and they don't get to see it before you do. Etika is a Canadian coffee retailer who are passionate about coffee. Talking to their team has been a joy for me over the past few weeks and they're just as passionate about espresso, espresso machines and all things coffee as 
I am. So if you want to check out Etika, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Be sure to go check out their website. If you're interested in any of these espresso machines and you have any questions, they'll be happy to help you out. Thank you again, Etika, for making this video possible. Okay, I'm gonna pull a shot in just one second, but which espresso machine should you buy? Well, I think this really comes down to your situation. For me, I think I'm leaning towards the dual boiler. In fact, I'm gonna keep this machine. I love both of them. If you're planning to buy the MarX, you should definitely consider it. It's an amazing espresso machine. Depending on your needs, it might be better than the Elizabeth II. It is $150 cheaper, but I do love how this is very different than what I currently own. No, it's not even something as robust as something like the Mara, but I do love the charm that the Elizabeth has. On the flip side, if you want to save some money, you want something that's very powerful, has a lot of steaming capabilities, and is an E61 brew group, the Mara X is awesome. You can add things like flow profiling and other modifications to this machine. And if that's your cup of tea, then this is the machine for you. They're both very different. And this is why I wanted to make this video because at $150, this is gonna be a tough decision. And honestly, I'd be stressed about it. So hopefully this video helps out a little bit. Let's make some coffee. That's great. Now, before you go, which would you decide if you were me? Would you buy the Mara X or would you buy the Elizabeth? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you prefer dual boilers, heat exchangers? What do you own? What do you plan to buy and why? Let me know. If you found this video at all helpful, entertaining, or you wanna see more comparison videos, let me know by hitting that like button. It really does help these videos out and it helps this channel, so I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe for more coffee videos like this. I've got some exciting more comparisons. Oh! on the way in the next little bit. Huge shout out to my patrons who help support this channel, make certain reviews possible, and have been lighting it up in the Discord. If you want to know more about that, I'll leave a link down in the description below. I've been loving seeing that community come to be. And if you want to join our Discord, I'd love to see you over there. All right, that's it for me. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.